Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Classic Gamer 74. I am your host Anthony Gamer and in today's episode we're going to discuss the most rare and valuable NES games. First off I want to say a great big hello to all my new subscribers. Welcome to the family. And if you are enjoying these episodes about the rare and valuable games I have a playlist that you can check out. I will put it in the description below where you can check out the rare and valuable games for other game systems. So far in this series, we've been discussing some pretty cool and hard to find rare and valuable NES games. As we get into this final episode in this series, we're going to get into some ones that are ridiculously expensive. So dust off your NES carts and check out and see if you have any of the ones that I'm going to discuss today. Remember that the prices are based on loose carts. Now this is being filmed in January 2024, so the prices may change whenever you are watching this video. Also, all the games that we're going to discuss today are ones that could have been purchased. Uh, none of those ones with extra screws or the ones you win by uh, winning a contest. These are store-bought NES titles. So without further ado, let's get into the game. And our first game for today is Panic Restaurant. This was released in 1992 by Taito. excuse me. Here's the description. Hot dogs on legs, jumping eggs, flying apple slices, hungry hamburger buns, pans shooting fried shrimp. What's going on? Ever since the mad chef, Odov, stole the Eaton restaurant from Cookie, strange things have been happening. To win back the Eaton, Cookie must face a restaurant that has come to life. Yep. Pretty interesting game. It kind of would be like if, um, what's that, Burger Time was a platformer instead of, uh, well, it's a, still a platformer game, but you know what I'm kind of saying. It's kind of like a new version of Burger Time, I suppose. If you'd like to add this game to your collection, it's going to cost you quite a bit. Currently, this game is worth $711. Next up, we have Power Blade 2. This came out in 1992, also by Taito. Uh, this one's not the greatest. Honestly, I have to be perfectly honest. In this one, you take on the role of a guy named Nova, and you are trying to stop these robots that were made by the Delta Foundation. It's, yeah, it's not the greatest, honestly. Um, yeah, I never even played Pla uh, Power Blade 1, so I don't know if it's any good or not, but... If you're a collector, you would probably like to get this. If you'd like to add this game to your collection, it will currently cost you $1,032. Next up, we have one of three adult games that were made for the NES. Uh, calm down, guys. These are 8-bit graphics, so you're not going to really see a whole lot. So just calm yourselves down. And the first one is Bubble... Bath Babes. This was released in 1991 and published by a company called Panacean. Okay. Uh, this is like Tetris variant. Uh, at the bottom of the play field, a naked woman bathes, sending up bubbles of different colors. Your task is to arrange those bubbles on the top of the play field in such a way that they create a line of several bubbles of the same color. When you succeed, the bubbles of the same color will disappear. When the whole play field is filled by bubbles, you lose. There are two types of gameplay. One grants you power-ups, which allow you to clear quickly a large amount of bubbles, with four stages of each. You get various mildly erotic scenes after completing the stages and a reward in the end. There is also a two-player mode. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I like the game. I have to admit it. It really is a lot of fun. Um, yeah, and that's why I like it because it's fun if you'd like to add this game to your collection it's going to cost you a little bit it currently is worth around one thousand two hundred dollars next up we have myriad six in one it's the same as the carlton six in one as far as i can tell um same games it's just got a different label on them yeah, I, I don't get it either. This was released in 1992 and was published by HES Interactive. Um, any of you that know anything know that a lot of these uh, multi-carts are not only illegal, but also very rare. Uh, the games themselves aren't 
that bad. Um, I've already reviewed this in more detail on a previous episode, as the Carlton 6 and 1 was actually a, value, a valuable game as well. Uh, there are six different games there's Cosmo Cop, Magic Carpet, 1001, uh, Balloon Monster, uh, Adam and Eve, Porter, and Bookie Man. Yeah, not bad games. It, it doesn't bring up the bad memories that you know, the other uh, multi-cart game that we shall not discuss, uh, you know, Action 52. But anyway, if you'd like to add this game to your collection, it's going to cost you a little bit. Currently, it's worth right around $1,291. Yikes. Once again, Taito is back, and here is another sequel. And this is The Flintstones, The Surprise at Dinosaur Peak. Now, a few years previous to this, uh, actually, uh, they had, in 1991, excuse me, they had a big hit with The Flintstones, The Rescue of Dino and Hoppy. So, about three years later, they came out with a sequel. Um, it's pretty much the same as the previous game, and the mechanics are the same. This one you can have Fred and Barney, I believe it's... Nope, it's single player. Sorry, I just was checking. And in this one, Pebbles and Bam Bam have come up missing, and you have to rescue them. Not a bad game. Once you get used to the controls, the game itself is really a lot of fun. However, what is not all a lot of fun is the price. If you'd like to add this game to your collection, it will currently cost you $1,381. Next up, we have a game that I covered in a previous episode where I discuss slot machines and uh, fruit machines, and this is Hot Slots. It was released in 1991 by Panician, the same people that made the bubble game. All right, this is a simple slot machine simulation. What makes it different are the erotic pictures of naked or half-naked girls, which you get if you successfully complete a casino round and win a lot of money. There are three casinos you can play in, each one leading to different girls and different short scenes and comments from them. Yep, if you are uh, like slot machines, you'll love this game. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> if you'd like to add this game to your collection, it will currently cost you $1,702. If you've been playing video games for any number of years, you're probably familiar with the many different types of strip poker games that have been made for various game systems and computer systems. Uh, the thing that's different among each of them is the difficulty involved, uh, how long it takes to get the girl undressed, and the quality of said girl. Well, this is an 8-bit game, so don't expect the graphics to be anything special. This is Peekaboo Poker that was released in 1990 by Panesian. Surprise, surprise. Uh, relax while you step into a world of game and women. The Poker Gremlin will help you help you find satisfaction from a game of cards. Carefully make your calls for they determine everything you can possibly imagine. Yeah. If you'd like to add this game to your collection, and I wouldn't blame you if you did, it's going to cost you a little bit. This game is currently worth around $1,760. All right, next up we have Cheetah Men 2. Now, you're probably thinking, wait a minute, that never actually got released. No, it didn't. Many of you are probably familiar with the story of how a bunch of them got found in a warehouse somewhere and then they turned around and sold them. So, chances were good you, if you really, really wanted to you could have purchased this although to be honest i don't know why you would oh this game is bad if you thought the action 52 games were bad this one would have fit in perfectly well actually yeah they had some really high hopes for this game they thought that the uh, cheetah men were going to be up there with the ninja turtles and battle toads and boy were they wrong yeah this game is just terrible even the hacked version can't really fix this i mean wow if you'd like to get this game for your collection, it's going to cost you quite a bit. Currently, it's worth $1,926. And next up, we have our number two most valuable game, and that is Little Samson. This was released in 1992 by Taito. What is it with Taito games being so rare and valuable? Anyway, now this game is actually pretty cool. Uh, I don't remember where I first heard about it. I believe it was in Nintendo Power Magazine, or 
maybe word of mouth, but anyway, this game is actually pretty cool. The story is, the Imperial Forgy has been invaded by Takid, the Prince of Darkness. Only the owners of the Magic Bells can stop his forces from destroying the realm. Led by the mountaineering youth Samson, a force of unlikely heroes sets out to banish evil forever. To become a fire-breathing dragon, a living statue of solid stone, or a nimble and crafty mouse. Soar the skies and belch fire as Kikira, the Dragon Lord. Crush enemy troops with the fists of granite as Gam, the Rock Lord. Scurry past dangerous monsters while setting the time bombs as K.O. the Mouse. These creatures join Little Samson to form a unique and powerful alliance as a last hope for the Imperial Forgy. Pretty cool game, actually, and I definitely will be doing a deeper dive into it at some point. If you'd like to get this game, it's going to cost you. It, it currently is worth $2,350. And now for the most valuable NES title that you could possibly have purchased, and that is Family Fun Fitness Stadium Events. This was from 1987 by Bandai. Now, many of you have probably heard the Power Pad uh, that was released a few years later. And this was created to help kids and gamers be more active or actively involved in their video games. Well, Originally, the company Bandai made this game. However, only 200 copies of it were shipped, and they were only released in a small number of Woolworth stores, and then they were recalled. It's really unknown how many of them are actually out in the wild right now. Uh, it's it's going to be less than 200, I know that. So that is why this game is really, really valuable. And it's actually a lot of fun, too. You can play it in it, in emulation, or if you do happen to have a power pad, uh, you can try it out. It's actually a lot of fun. Unfortunately, I'm too fat to play it uh, the way it was intended on the power pad, so I have to do it uh, with an emulation. Now, if you'd like to add this game to your collection, it will currently cost you $16,100. In our next episode, we're going to discuss all the Mario-related games for the NES. Well, that brings this episode of Classic Gamer 74 to a close. I really hope you all enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed presenting it to you. If you did like it, let me know by giving me a big thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and don't forget to click that little bell icon down there so you'll be notified when I upload any new videos. Connect with me on all my social media platforms and consider becoming a patron. You can help me out by going to my Patreon page where you will find videos and all kinds of stuff that you won't find anywhere else. So please be generous and help me out on Patreon. The link is in the description below. Well, until next time, this has been Anthony Gamer. I wish you a great week. Until next time, be strong, be safe, be happy, be healthy, and above all, take care of each other, be kind to each other, and stop hate of all kinds. See you soon. Bye for now.